I want to speak to you today about how to hear God which is a very question is already wrong because the Bible clearly states from the beginning that my sheep they know my voice you can never take a child through a school and how to hear their parent hearing comes with birth and if your child can't hear with birth then your child has has some kind of a disorder or has some kind of an illness so for a Christian to hear God is just part of being a Christian to know his voice is part of your spiritual birth it's part of the blessing of belonging in this family it's what makes God personal it's what makes God not a force but a friend what separates our religion from any religion if I could use Christianity as a religion though it's not a religion it's a revelation but what separates it diff differently is that our God is a living God and our God is a speaking God and our God is not a force our God is a person who wants to be a friend in fact Jesus brought us so close home he called him a father and when he talked about prayer he didn't say to address a impersonal force uh, mother earth he didn't say to address some kind of a th this being he said to address him as our father who is in heaven I'm going to read uh, two portions of uh, scriptures in the Bible the first one is first Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 and it says the following so Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord also because he consulted a medium for guidance but he did not inquire of the Lord therefore he killed him all right rough words but you get the point he killed him because he didn't inquire of the Lord now I'm gonna read you right now a verse where contradicts this verse in 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 5 and when Saul saw the army of the Philistines he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly and when Saul inquired of the Lord the Lord did not answer him neither by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets and so in verse 18 because you did not obey the voice of the Lord nor execute the fierce judgment on Amalek da -da -da, God's like I'm done with you and I'm just gonna read one more portion and we're gonna contrast two guys David and Saul and glean some uh, practical truths on how to hear God first Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6 now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him that's a good reason to be distressed because the soul of our people was grieved so people you know a lot of times when they're very hurting hurting hurt people hurt others they, sometimes they don't mean it they just they're just hurting for every man lost his sons and his daughters but David strengthened than himself in the Lord his God and verse 8 and David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue and then we see that the Lord answered him so we see these two guys one guy we see at the end of his life God gives like a little summary of his life and he's like hey you were not faithful to me you did not keep the word of the Lord so not just the voice of the Lord the word of the Lord and by the way you did not call upon me when you were supposed to dead and then we actually look at the details of what happened there we see that Saul actually called on God and God didn't pick up the phone and so Saul got upset he got impatient he, he he's like man I'm gonna find another way to get to not God but Samuel so we notice when God stopped talking to Saul he didn't want to get another way or get somebody to get to God he went and found a witch doctor to get to Samuel and before the witch doctor was able to pull all of her little charms Samuel just appeared now I can't explain fully that different theologians disagree on how and what really happened I mean God just kind of intervened Samuel showed up and Samuel's like dude you're dead he's like you disobeyed the voice of God you, you you're dead I told you to resign a long time ago there's another guy named David he is the rightful king of Israel if you would have resigned you would have lived that's my paraphrase and so he's saying you're gone tonight you and your sons are gonna die period and Samuel just leaves and so of course Saul goes into battle and Saul dies and and you know things work out sadly like that I want to share with you four simple principles on how to discern or how to hear the voice of God number one if you're more desperate for a word from God than you are devoted to God you will lose discernment and fall into deception Saul's first problem was this his desperation for a word at the expense nothing wrong with being desperate for a word 
but when it's at the expense of devotion to God you can find yourself in extremely murky waters and you don't need a witch today Facebook prophet will be enough YouTube prophet Instagram mystic will be enough where you can find yourself in extremely polluted waters and watch this Saul got a word but not a solution people who get too desperate for a word at the expense I'm again here don't hear what I'm not saying at the expense of devotion to God see God's first problem with Saul was this he says Saul was not faithful meaning when a person plays games with God when they're not devoted to God and now they're at the fork in the road now there are different challenges in life and they're like man I need God to tell me what to do I need God to tell me what to do and instead of starting from point A and say hey you know what as a sheep I kind of drifted from the shepherd let me get back to the green pastures let me get back to the still waters let me get back to my shepherd no somebody tell me what to do when that attitude begins to come on a person who claims to be a Christian the problem with that is this we can get a word but we might look, lose discernment discernment of the Holy Spirit discernment whether the Holy Spirit is speaking will always will always be contingent on your devotion to God when you're devoted to God you can have the prophet come to you and give you a word and your discernment will tell you way off and you will thank him you will do the courtesy thank you but you'll walk away and you'll say but God's already dealt with me about this I already know prophet came bound himself one time to Paul and he's like this is the man who's gonna be da -da -da. and Paul's like yeah I know mm -hmm. thanks great great word by the way great sermon illustration that could do really well on YouTube and uh, this whole thing that you did but I, I know I know and he's like don't don't persuade me I already know not in an arrogant way Paul did not ignore or somehow belittle the prophetic voice but see when your devotion even if you are not a prophet a pastor have a bible degree your devotion to God it's the same thing as when a child is with the parent the child might not have a degree but the child already knows discernment between the parents voice and somebody else's voice your closeness to God gives you discernment and your discernment protects you from deception why am I saying this I don't have a beef with anybody in particular on Facebook what saddens me is amounts of people that message me Papa prophesy Papa give me a word what saddens me is seeing believers who then message me this man of God took all of my money this man of God because all the prophets many prophets on Facebook are for profit if you don't sow you don't get a word people are not gonna sit there and just prophesy only hungry Jen just kind of ministers and it, only at the end when everybody logs off we're like hey by the way you can give people don't do that if people do that for a living and I understand work is worthy of his wages and everything but so much rip off that happens and then you find out the lives of these people where they are toxic where they are hurt they are rejected listen and just because you can prophesy really well it does not mean that you have a character it does not mean that you have marriage it does not mean that you are not watching porn it does not mean that you're not smoking drugs or taking mushrooms it does not mean that if you switch religions you cannot go in and become a professional psychic some people that I hear I'm like man you can be a perfect psychic and there's no Jesus mentioned there's no salvation everything is about just speaking goodness and love and peace and and all of this stuff so we have to be very careful as Christians I'm not saying to walk around being afraid I'm talking about being devoted to God that we are not desperate at the expense and what I want to encourage is this God wants to communicate to you within your community God spoke to David but have you noticed from a priest probably some kind of a small guy that didn't matter God spoke through him when Saul tried to communicate to God in his community God was silent the problem wasn't the lack of the gift in his community it was the lack of the character in Saul 
it wasn't that Saul now needed to find another because there was no other prophet it's, it's not that Saul now needed to go against someone else Saul needed to fix the connection and so sometimes people would you know switch churches or they were like man but I don't hear anything from God well it will help if you come to church it will help if you will be in the community it will also help if you develop a quiet time with God where your phone is turned off and you actually connect to the Lord so if the Lord is not communicating don't rush to switch the community watch say is there a connection personally with me because this God communicated before God communicated to Saul before the fact that God stopped communicating it wasn't a reason for Saul to start going right now DMing every person on IG or DMing everybody on Facebook and say give me a word give me a word give me a word all Saul needed to do is to find where is the reception is my recept is my receiver off is if I put it on mute wait do I even do I even have it where did I lost it and we're gonna see in just a moment what happened with Saul why God stopped speaking to him but I want to encourage you to listen to God in the community your pastor your leader your mom your dad your spiritual brother and sister who helps you to walk along does not have to have a prophet in front of their name on Facebook to discern God's will for your life I remember when I was extremely passionate to move to Seattle this passion and vision to start a church in Seattle birthed out of the fact that I offered my pastor one idea and he rejected it and after that I started to feel strong discernment that God is calling me out of hungry gen weird and all the things start lining up right away I start you know gathering and this vision to start a church in Seattle wasn't mine it was my pastor's vision he wanted us to start the church in Seattle we prayed for a whole year here after worship so after our worship and so a month and a half I'm already developing a team I already talked to a few people in our church they're like yeah we'll move with you and so I'm thinking uh, yeah 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 and stuff so, but you know when that is fostering on the ground and the soil of offense already it's not God and so I remember right there in the last row with the pastor um, it was evening we're sitting and so um, and I was like so this you know Seattle idea I'm like I'm willing and I was willing to sacrifice sell the house give all the money away move from zero move into apartment and start everything from zero again I was willing to die literally I was willing to die and I'm telling my pastor what am I willing to do and he said you don't need to do that he says you need to be here he said you know you need to be the one to release other pastors to start campuses he says this is your home this is your base and you shouldn't be going anywhere I said you sure I said what happened who's gonna go to Seattle he says we're praying to God let God figure that out he says you don't have to be the one he said that just that he's like when you will be there he said you will be alone I was like I'll be connected to hungry Jen he's like yeah three and a half hours he says uh, that's it he put a needle in my little awesome revelation to change my life and I thank God he saved me I thank God and I, I left I told my wife and I said like a truckload is off of my shoulders I mean I know what it's like to start construction of the church building the team and everything here from from the beginning I, I know the pain I know the suffering I'm still dealing we're still growing growing pains and everything why in the world that I want to move to Seattle to start that again like I don't know but see when you develop in my case it was little offense that slowly took root that then anything as long as I could just simply you know find my own ministry and everything not that I had no problem that I had a problem here and so when God dealt with that when God dealt with that all that my pastor had to do he didn't say thus says the Lord thou shall not go to Seattle he simply said uh yes I don't think it's a not not a right time and then I remember the same thing that happened with Pastor Ilya you know I was like okay we're gonna find you know a scapegoat send Ilya there <laughs> Ilya volunteered and stuff and so but I I did not have peace about it Ilya goes to Shepherd Bushiri's church Bushiri you know God is giving you Seattle and that's Bushiri that's a man of God that's a prophet I just don't have peace about it and so I told my pastor I said pastor I, I'm not a prophet I was like I just see all the red flags I don't know I just don't have peace about it so I talked to Ilya I was like bro I know I'm not your Papa Bushiri I'm just your friend but I was like bro it's a disaster please don't go he's like okay I got it I won't 
And I was like, what about the Bashir? He's like, that's his prophecy. He's going to be accountable for that. He's like, he's like, I have a pastor and I'm not a prophet in that. But honestly, looking back, if we would have launched it right before the pandemic, it wasn't, it's not that. Instead, what happened is that a online church, online church would have not been launched and stuff. And so, and I really, I really believe in my heart that we have to submit to the body. Submit to the body. As a pastor, I have to submit to the body. The body has to submit to the pastor. As a husband, I submit to my wife. As my wife, she submits to me. I'm not talking about where just one way street, but where we are able to hear God even in a community. That's why we got to be in a community. Even if your community is small, it doesn't matter. Even if your community doesn't have necessarily apostles or prophets yet who function in that, or maybe even the community doesn't have a pastor yet, but be in a community. There's a protection there. And if God doesn't speak in the community, like man, but I'm, 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 I'm reaching out, God doesn't speak. I'm going to give you a few other tips that maybe you and I just need to explore on. Second thing is relationship with the Holy Spirit is more important than revelation from the Holy Spirit. So what I mean by this is that make sure you don't go to ask God for a word until you go to ask God for His presence. I want you to see these two people. David is distressed. David is upset. David is burned out. David feels he just got rejected by the Philistines who didn't want to have him fight alongside with them. So David is coming back. All of his wives were taken. His children were taken. Everything he built was burned down. He pretty much experienced bankruptcy, divorce, loss, death, everything all in one day because all of them are gone and he doesn't know if they're dead or not. All of that in one day. David is upset. The Bible says he was very distressed. His guys are handling this different. They're like, we know who the problem is. David is, let's cut his head off. How is that going to help us? I don't know, but we're upset. We need to kill somebody. So they're thinking about killing him. David is upset and the Bible says instead of blaming God, Philistines, his guys, himself, why he didn't leave some guys to protect. Instead of blaming himself, why he attacked Amalekites secretly and told the Philistines that he was attacking Israelites. And so instead of taking a blame game, David does this. He goes to the Lord. I want you to notice he's not asking God what should I do. He went to the Lord to get strength. Before he said God what should I do? He went to God and he said God can you just love on me? Can you help get me out of this little thing that I'm, I don't know, I got a glitch right here. I can't, my mind can't stop like thinking on its own. God, get me out of this. God, can you, can you just cover me right now? God, I need your strength. I don't know how he did it. Whether he prayed in tongues, whether he worshiped, whether he read his own Psalms that he read, whether he laid on the floor. I don't know, whatever he did, the Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord. And then out of a place of, I'm strong. Situation is still bad. He says, Lord, what should I do? Saul on the other hand is afraid, scared. He says, God, what did I do? Nothing. What would have happened if Saul would have went into the presence of God first and out of that he said, Lord, what would you have me do? Your relationship is more important than a revelation. And the problem why sometimes we don't hear anything from the Lord is because we are not near to the Lord. If we want to hear, we got to be near. God does not like to be treated as a vending machine. You punch the right number, comes out. God wants to be a personal with you. God wants a relationship with you. God wants you to grow closer to Him as you go through what you go through and then come out of it and so that you will give Him the glory. You won't drop Him like a hot potato because now He got you out and God was really not the goal of your life. He was the means to get you to the goals. And God's like, I want to be your friend. I want to be your father. I want you to prioritize relationship with me. Strengthen yourself in me. Find your courage in me. Find your protection me. Come on somebody, drop that fire emoji on YouTube right now. God says, get me into you. Holy Spirit will guide you if you let Him be your comforter when all comforts fail. Until you renew your strength, you can't receive from the Holy Spirit. God wants to be your source of strength before He is a resource for our solution. Go to God to be filled with Him before you go to Him to be led by Him. The key to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is first to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. When you are confused, scared, toxic, 
bleeding, oozing toxic waste out of your attitude. Don't run to God and say, God, give me a word. Run to God and say, God, give me you. And say, God, here is me. Fix me. Fill me. Help me. I'm scared. God, I'm worried. God, I'm mad. God, I'm, it's just the way I am right now. I'm not feeling good. Recalibrate me. Restore my soul. Renew my strength. God, I wait on you. And those who wait upon you, they will renew their strength. Renew my strength. And the moment your strength is renewed, say, Lord, what should I do? Until you are in that place, you can be misguided. If you are hearing from a place of toxic emotions. If you are hearing from a place of hurt, you can hear very negative words that could not, might not be God. I love David's principle. When you're hurting, when you're afraid, when you're lost, go to him for strength. Yes, God sees you need direction. Be like Esther. When you are desperate for deliverance, invite the king for a date. Esther did not come to the palace of the king and give him a tantrum. How dare you allow that to happen? What kind of a husband are you? It's been 30 days and you hang out with all these women and you never once asked me for a date. You never asked me how I feel. My country is being wiped out and you already conquered them, killed my parents and now you're gonna wipe them alive. How dare you do that and walk away. I'm pretty sure she felt doing that. I'm pretty sure she thought of every scenario but she looked at that and she's like he's a king he's gonna get me shot and killed so instead when she came and the king asked her what do you want Esther this would be a good moment to give her I just want one thing save my nation and Esther says I just want one thing um, I have a dinner prepared for you a banquet and by the way bring that joker Haman <laughs> why because I'm strong enough to eat in the presence of my enemy and while they were eating the king is asking so Esther Come on Esther, I know you didn't just invite me for a banquet. <laughs> I know you women. <laughs> I know you want something. <laughs> what do you want? She said, if it really pleases you King, can you come for a banquet again tomorrow? I mean, the girl is cooking him. She's literally, she's like carrying him like this. And he's letting be led like that because when the King knows that you're interested in him, not in what he can do for you, not only you got the king but the king has got you the second day Haman shows up again and see now something shifts when the king has finally ate her request now will not fall on deaf ears and when she asked the king she just says for one thing save my life guess what started to happen with Haman this little jolly little happy camper guy the bible says he got on his knees and started to beg you want to get your enemy on your knees, on their knees, on his knees? Give your king a banquet. See some of us give our king a blame. Some of us give our king a piece of our mind. Some of us don't even go to our king for strength. If you want to hear the Lord, draw near him. Be in the community. Number two, just draw near him. If you've never heard the voice of God, if you've never heard what the Lord wants you to do and you are today, this, this whole topic of hearing God's voice is so strange for you. And you're not one of those people who's willing to put God's said in front of every single thing that comes into your mind. You're very, you have a fear of the Lord. But to hear God's voice, don't focus on hearing, focus on being near. You will miss His voice. He's your shepherd, you're His sheep. He's your father, you are, your, you are His child. You will hear Him when you're near him. Are you with me? Number three, when we are filled with God's word, we will become familiar with God's voice. Have you noticed that it says in here about Saul in Chronicles. He died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord. So we covered that. He wasn't near God. He didn't seek to be near God. But I want you to notice another phrase. It says, because, what, what was part of his unfaithfulness? Because he did not keep the word of the Lord. 
he didn't keep the Torah this is not the voice of the Lord which we're going to talk about in just a second he also disobeyed the voice but he did not keep the word of the Lord in other words he came to God say Lord speak to me and when God has given him the word he didn't keep it read it study it dwelt in it obeyed it you know what saddens me about my generation is that it's a generation of God said when Jesus was on earth he always said it is written our generation even little guys literally just just God delivered yesterday and every other word in their sermon God told me 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 and so I teach our young guys less of God said more of it is written not that I doubt your ability to hear God it's the reason why you say God said is because you know people don't trust you so you think that if you just simply put God's name in front of everything that comes out of your mouth it makes you more spiritual but most of us who've been around the block a little bit we know all of this is you're just a young teenager you're just a young person I want you to notice when Adam was in the garden with Eve and Satan came he says has God said because there was no word of the Lord there was just a voice of God and therefore Satan poked around the voice of God and he says has God said and Eve says yes God has said da -da -da. in the wilderness Jesus replies the devil when the devil tempts him and he doesn't say well God said he said it is written all Jesus had to do is say I said and the devil would have trembled all Jesus had to do is to say hey, I am the word devil shut up he didn't do that he said it is written and the devil is not dumb he comes back and he says well it is also written and Jesus said oh I don't know what to do and he stuck around it is written again the third time devil came and Jesus says it is written this is what I realized about us people who get extremely sensitive to the voice of God who don't live in God's Word. Wilderness wipes them out. They're good as long as every prophetic word comes true, everyone gets healed, the paychecks are coming in, everyone accepts me and loves me. The moment life throws a curveball, they don't know what to do. Because you can't throw at the devil what God said. Oh wait that word was actually supposed to come in December of last year. That didn't come true and the devil will punch you back and he said ha did he? yeah good point devil the word didn't come true it was supposed to come true actually yeah what about the other word and what he will do is he will punch you right in the face and that's why as a Christian your best weapon is not to try to explain to the devil why the prophetic word didn't come true what happened with that prophet what happened with this one what happened with that word that you really felt like God spoke to you in the morning your best defense and God wants you to know if you want to hear my voice keep my word it is written study the Bible read the Bible my friends it's time for us Pentecostal charismaniacs to get back in the Bible open our Bible and read the word highlight the Bible memorize the Bible keep the word of the Lord your word I've hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you his word is the light. His word is the seed. His word is the hammer. His word is the honey. His word is your sword. His word is his voice. His voice is there. And if you are stuck in the wilderness right now and you heard the voice of the Lord at the river Jordan, I'm going to tell you one thing. What will get you through the wilderness is not the voice in the, in the Jordan. What's going to get you is the scripture. Is you're gonna have to open up your, your mouth and begin to speak it is written. God said he will never leave me and will never forsake me. God says he loves me therefore he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God said that greater is he that is in me than the one that's in the world. God said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God said that if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. God said that he will prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. God said he will anoint my head with oil. God said goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. God said that if you will keep this word and if it will not depart your mouth, God says that you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And God said that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water and you will bear fruit in this season. Your leaf will not wither and everything that you do will be blessed by Him. God said it is written. Come on somebody shout it is written. Come on somebody shout it is written. 
Somebody touch your neighbor, say, learn the Bible. Learn the Bible. Touch your other neighbor that you didn't think about first. Say, study the word. Take a seat. Say this with me. If you can't get a word from God, get into the word of God. If you want a word from God, get into the word of God. I'm not in any way belittling or saying that it's not important. What I want us is to build our foundation as a church on the word of the Lord. If every other word comes out of your mouth is God said, God said, God told me to quit my job. God told me to leave my wife. God told me not to be with my kids anymore. God told me to do this. God told me, God told me, God told me. But your whole life doesn't resemble of it is written. It's in the Bible. 90% of every direction we need in life is right here. The rest of it God will reveal to us as we seek Him in prayer. And last tip on how to hear God and why I believe some people don't hear God anymore. If you can't hear God's voice today, it's because you did not heed His voice yesterday. I want you to notice 1 Samuel 28 18 it says this, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord yesterday. What was Saul's problem? When God spoke he did not do what he said. So now he wanted God to speak again. If God spoke before something to do and you did not follow through and you found yourself in the fork where God is not speaking, can I invite you today? Go back to where he spoke and do that thing. He will speak again. You are responsible for, he for heeding the voice you are hearing. We are responsible. When I was younger and I did not discern the voice of the Lord as I, I, as I know that today, I was my prayer. I remember even fasting for days. God, here, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. I did not know the weight that I will have to carry afterward to do that word. I, because in my mind, I thought hearing God's voice simply meant that I'm going to give everybody prophetic words or words of knowledge. But of course, I asked him to speak to me about my life. And when he started to speak to me about giving, about forgiving, uh, my prayer after that said, Lord, speak less. <laughs> I got enough <laughs> right now. <laughs> Lord, I know what to do. I got it. I got it Lord. Unless he's just encouraging me which God doesn't it just gives gives direction. He also gives encouragement. He also is he's our father. You know I don't just tell my wife what to do. I also tell her I love her. I tell her you know I'm with her and so don't, don't get this view of God that he's just like tells you like like navigation map you know or he's your map guidance. No he's your father. He is your is your guide but when it comes to Lord what should I do next? What should I do next? Ask yourself a question if you're not hearing God today has be spoke has he spoken before where you said um, <clears throat> I don't like that <laughs> I'm not gonna do that why should he speak now if he did not get the proper honor of his word being followed through and that's really what happened with Saul God said destroy Amalekite Saul said yeah he did it halfway God says you're no longer a king yeah I'm gonna still be a king you'll see I'm gonna still hold on to my crown and then God stops speaking and then Saul just lives his own life on his own and then finally he hits crisis he cannot get his head wrapped around he can't figure out a military solution for that he's trying to reach God and God stops speaking and then Saul goes outside of Christian community and talks to somebody who's a medium he gets a word from Samuel but he still dies in a battle and the scripture gives us a real reason why he wasn't faithful he didn't keep the word of the Lord and he did not obey the voice of the Lord when God speaks and you don't obey the next time he speaks quieter the next time it's not that he speaks quieter it's that we hear him less every time you disobey the voice of the Lord it's like on a computer you know you have that button where it lowers the volume of whatever is playing each time you disobey you're hitting lower volume lower volume lower volume music is still playing you're just hearing it less and less 
until comes a point you're like man I don't want to hear and you hit mute the music is playing and all you got to do today you don't need to get a new computer you don't need to fix your speakers you just need to unmute whatever is playing in your computer and same thing has to happen in our relationship with God all we got to do is we got to repent we got to come back to the Father and say Lord where I have disobeyed you and sometimes the Lord will bring it to you if he doesn't bring it to you don't look don't look for it if God doesn't bring it to you don't go in your background trying to figure out where you disobeyed God trust me you're gonna get you're gonna find something okay your backyard is not necessarily filled with treasure it's filled with a lot of mistakes okay so do not go looking for an open door or some kind of a sin that you left unrepented please don't do that because if you do that the devil will get you right on the hook the Bible tells us to look for his face not for a sin and as you look for his face when the light comes on you will see the dust and then God will give you the power to clean the dust but if you go looking for the dust in the dark my friend you're gonna make a mess out of your life our focus is the eyes of God our focus is the face of Jesus our focus is the presence of the Holy Spirit our focus is the glory of God our focus is the feet of Jesus as you look for that God will begin to remind you hey son you did not obey me there hey son I asked you to forgive this person hey son I asked you I mean it was very clear in the Bible don't sleep with your girlfriend you don't need a word from God for that all you gotta do is just obey that word son obey my word keep my word and then you will hear my voice last final thing I'm gonna say if you've done all of these and you're like Vlad I still don't hear it's because God is testing you have you been to school when the teacher talks 30 minutes every day you want the teacher to stop talking after a while it doesn't stop talking until that one day on Friday little pieces of paper are handed out it's called quiz or a test and then that's when you want the teacher to start telling you everything and the teacher goes muzzles her mouth she quiets her tongue and you're like hey and she says silence you can hear flies in the room you can hear your own heartbeat telling you fool you should have studied yesterday not played the video game when the teacher doesn't speak it's a sign you are taking a test when the teacher doesn't speak it does not mean the teacher left the room it still means the teacher is there it just means you're taking a test God will speak again God will guide again but dwell in his presence dwell in his glory walk obedient to his word and you will see he will guide you I believe in the voice of God I believe if it wouldn't be for the voice of God I wouldn't do what I do today I heard my pastor you're called to preach but it was the voice of God that confirmed that upstairs in my room at 12 o'clock on Wednesday when I was about 16 years of age it was honestly the confirmation of that that peace guidance is how I got married it's how I gave a lot of cars away almost almost every single year I feel that prompting sometimes it's in the service the Holy Spirit just says I want you to do that and then I would see a breakthrough in that particular area of my life it's how in the beginning of the year on the sixth day of fasting we declared a 21 day fast and I was in California and uh, at my friend David Diga's uh, conference and I got on my knees the presence of God was so strong and I felt strong sense it was so clear as a day I could take a bullet for that word that it was God and he says I want you to do it for 40 days your ministry has never started your ministry should be started with a prolonged fast my son did it you're my son you're gonna have to follow his steps I got up and I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew God called me to fast for 40 days mind you I didn't the more the more most I did was 18 days I thought I want to die from it God's supernatural strength sustained me through that I saw my Vladimir Savchuk ministry literally doubled and in some areas quadrupled uh, right after 40 day fast I saw breakthrough that I didn't think even is possible for me why did that breakthrough come because of obedience to God's voice but why was that voice comes my friend we have to live in a community we have to draw near to hear we have to stay in his word and then we have to watch that the words were spoken to us by God we are faithful with them and then if we are in a season of silence don't get discouraged stay close to God and what do you do when you're taking a test in school you remember what the teacher said before she stopped speaking so when you're taking a test remember everything God has promised remember everything God has said remember who he is and remember what he has done in your life and you will see that season will be over and God will not only speak again God will break through in your life again
in Jesus name every believer is meant to live their life led by the Holy Spirit sons are led by the Spirit of God God wants to lead your life. God wants to guide your life. God doesn't want you to guess through life. God doesn't want you to copy somebody else's life. God doesn't want you to just do everything that everybody else is doing. He wants you to be led by His Spirit. But to be led by His Spirit, we must stay in a community because we are a body. We're not an island. We're not Jack Bauer. We're not, you know, this Iron Man, you know, all of these, you know, Spider-Man and one man. We are a body. We're not one man. We're not a one-man show. We are a body. We are to stay in His Word. We are to stay committed to the voice that he has spoken before and then when we hit a season of silence we stay committed to God knowing he is faithful and he has never never ever abandoned us. Amen.